All right, in this video, we're looking at how to draw a finish to start network diagram with lag. So here we have our table of dependencies. We only have three activities in this project. Uh, a, our activity B depends on A. Oh, this is a regular finish to start relationship like we talked about in the last video. We don't have to specify that it's finished to start uh, if there's no lag, because that's just a regular relationship. And then activity C here depends on B, but its relationship is special to finish to start two, which means that it's a regular finish to start relationship with two days of lag. So that means that once B finishes, you have to wait two days and then C can finish, then C can start. So first of all, let's set up the Gantt chart. It just looks like this. And now we can add in our activities to our Gantt chart. So activity A starts at the beginning of the project and its duration is three. So here it will start at zero and it will go one, two, three days, right? Lining up there. Well, you know what? Let's make that a little bit better. Uh, let's go like this. One, two, day three, right? A, activity A is three days long, makes sense. Now activity B depends, just depends on A with a regular finish to start relationship and it's four days long. So we're gonna start here at the very end of A. Go one, two, three, four days, finishing here at the end of day seven. Now we have C, activity C depends on B, but it's a finish to start relationship with two days of lag. So that means, like I said before, we have to wait two days after activity B ends until activity C can start. So we find the end point here, it's at the seven, and you go one, two, uh, this will be our lag of two days, and then this is where activity C will start, and it's three days long, so we'll go one, two, three, just like that. All right, now let's draw in our PDM network diagram. And to account for the, the finish to start plus two days of lag here, all we have to do is we just denote that over top of the arrow. Uh, we will write uh, finish to start to FS2. Okay, so now we can do our forward pass. So we would start at zero. Zero plus three is three. We bring the three over. Three plus four is seven. And now what we do is this, the earliest start of C can start two days after the earliest finish of F. So just add two to this. So we have seven plus two is nine, and then nine plus three is 12. And look, we can check up here to make sure that we have this correct, right? So A goes from zero to three, zero to three. B goes from three to seven, three to seven. And C goes from nine to 12, so we have from nine to 12. So that checks out for our early starts and early finish. And then we can just do the backward pass if you want, just to make sure everything adds up. So we'd have 12, 12 minus three is nine. And then again, we would just subtract two. Well, for the late start, the late start of C would be two days after the late finish of B. So in this case, this is there's only one path here, so it has to be the critical path. So we bring this nine here and the seven. That's why we're seeing that all of these would have a float of zero, free float or total float. Uh, anyways, we have seven minus four is three, and then we'll bring three down here. We'll end on zero, so we know we've done it correctly.